the MDT Comp Muzzle Brake, right now on Pirate Firearms and Reloading. Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to take a look at the MDT Comp Brake. So this is their latest and greatest muzzle brake. Um, so let's open it up. Now, I have had this open in the past, I have to confess. Um, so, as you can see with all the right up here on the back, 0.44 pounds, so it's not particularly heavy, but it is a good solid brake. The biggest thing that interested me was the fact that the top ports are tunable and the baffle design diverts a lot of the blast away from the actual shooter. Um, we all know some muzzle brakes are utterly terrible to shoot in confined spaces, um, so I'm hoping this one will be a little bit better. So, as with most modern muzzle, muzzle brakes, you do have a self-timing nut, so there's no gunsmithing machining work required. They're available in three different threads. This one happens to be 5 8 by 24 um, for the CTR barrel you see sticking out here in the corner. Um, Self-timing, I'll show you the ports here in a second about tuning these top ports, but they are totally adjustable, so you can control the exact amount of muzzle rise you're getting, or ideally tune all your muzzle rise out so it stays dead on target after squeezing the trigger. The ports are quite a unique shape. You'll see they've got almost like teeth on the front. That's to help disrupt the gas that vents back. The first port in the brake is almost straight out the sides. The theory behind that is you're creating a little bit of a barrier for the rest of the ports which slowly get more aggressive on more of an angle. There's also this little hole here between the first and second port which shoots a little jet of gas forward to also help disrupt the gas coming out of the three further ports if you like. So. If you want to jump on MGT's website and have a look, they've done the videos, they put like talcum powder around the brake and then obviously fired and showed you what happens with like a traditional muzzle brake versus this new one. Fantastic little bit of technology. I mean, the only answer is testing it in the real world, but I'm sure it's going to be fantastic like all other MDT products. Um, also available in a variety of calibers and they take the time to actually if you can see that there, mark on each brake the calibre. So if you have multiple of these, you're going to know exactly which one you should be fitting. So the 6mm is for like 6mm and 223, which this happens to be today. So without further ado, we're going to go and fit it. So what you want to do is make sure the timing nut is hard in against the brake. Now, MDT says this next part is optional. If you've been following the channel for any length of time, you'll know I love my Loctite. So we're gonna do exactly what they said and apply a thin coat of blue Loctite or 243. All right, that should be enough. Right, so now what you do is you take the brake. So what we're going to do is spin this brake on. Now, before I started rolling here with the footage, I did level out this rifle in my vise. Quite like Arca Rail for that. And so I've attached, just off on the edge of the camera here, um, my Wheeler Engineering level. Um, so I can see it as well as using the level back on the scope as well. So you basically want to spin it around till it becomes finger tight. Then what you're going to do is you're going to hold the timing nut and you're going to back this guy out to where it's level. Now, I'm going to do a couple of things here. Just so I don't mar the finish on the actual brake when I put the spanner on it, I am going to quickly run, and I should have done this before I started, run a little bit of 
electrical tape around there. Okay. And so now what you want to do is put a level here on the actual brake itself and adjust it till you get it level. Now what you're going to do is bring that timing nut up to the shoulder. Like so. Just like that. Now you need a couple of spanners. Um, where possible, I like to use an actual fixed spanner rather than an adjustable. Um, you're going to need a one inch spanner for the actual brake itself. Um, I had a look around, I don't have a bigger spanner to, to grip the brake, so we're going to use the, heart, uh, the one inch on the actual timing nut and we're going to use the adjustable here on the brake. So I'm going to try and give you the best angle possible here. So clamp that down nice and tight like that. And I'm going to do MDT recommends about 15 to 30 foot pounds of torque. Now, unfortunately, I can't get my crow's foot in here to actually put a torque wrench on it. So we're going to have to do a little bit of guessing here, but that's okay. And I'm just going to keep going and going and going until that feels nice and firm, just like that. Back that guy out. Definitely good. We're just going to give it one more little nip up. It's important if you do add tape that you make sure your adjustable spanner is as tight as possible to avoid damaging the finish. Right, there we go folks, nice and level. So that had to be one of the easiest muzzle brake installs I think I've ever done. Um, a lot of the time I used to get sort of gunsmith um, type muzzle brakes where you had to actually turn the shoulder and lock it up yourself. I quite like them because they've got that um, very sleek look. If you manage the, um, if you match the profile of the barrel to the end of the brake, they can look like they're almost a factory product. Um, in this case, I'm really interested in these top ports. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to tune the top ports. Okay, so what you need is a T15 Torx. And just want to back these two screws out here on the top, like so. And now what I need is a small pin punch or other such device. Um, and now with this little slot here in the center, you can slide this internal adjustment plate back and forward. So if you go all the way forward, Basically what you have is all the top ports closed off. If you're shooting a really, really light caliber, light load, something like that, you may want those closed off. Um, really, that's quite user dependent. Most people are gonna have at least something. So what they've actually done in here is they've actually put notches in this top plate. And that allows you to kind of have a rough setting. So you can come in here, okay, so that's effectively notch one. So you can see we're just starting to open them up, mainly here on the further rearmost baffle. So the, the first port set here doesn't actually have vents, it's only the second, third, and fourth that have vents. Then we go back, so that's halfway there, right, or all, all the way on. So I'm gonna start, I think about halfway, it's probably a good place. Now, they don't actually specify any torque setting in terms of screwing these back down. Obviously, firm is required, and they want you to go back and forward between the two screws, which makes sense. If this comes out of adjustment slightly, it's not really gonna ruin your day, quite like if your brake was to come loose or something like that. 
but it's always good to have them torqued down correctly. So once I find a position here, I'll probably take that all out, apply Loctite to those threads, and then clamp it down in the, in the desired position. But for now, that's where I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna go and shoot it, and see how much gas comes out that top, and whether my muzzle rises under control. If not, I'll add more. If it's maybe too much under control, or I'm getting a little bit of a dip, my bipod tends to dig in a little bit, then I'll take a little bit off. So you'll soon know by shooting it. The other thing you can do is you could put it in a tripod and free recoil it and have somebody watching from the side and see how much it's actually going up as well. So you've got a few options there. It depends on how you shoot it. I'm gonna tune it in the prone position with the rifle fully supported like I would be shooting at any other point and that's where I want it to be tuned at. Thanks for watching folks. Please don't forget to subscribe. Most of you are not subscribed. The more subscribers, the more it helps the channel out and the more watch time I get. So I'd really appreciate subscribing. If you like the channel, give it a like and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And if you found this video helpful, please share it with your friends. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Catch you next time.